What's up fam, welcome back to the channel. In this video that you're about to watch is a recording of a call I had with someone that they were about to work with a marketing agency and some of the truth and nuances that come along with working with those clients, along with a couple of tips on how to have a successful event coverage shoot. Let's get right into it. I sent a contract and invoice and the payment schedule of like 50, 50% up front, 25, 25. Um, on the last day of shooting and then upon approval of the deliverables. And the guy basically was like, hey, like, I wish we would have known that. Which I don't remember if I told him that or not, but I thought I did. Um, so he was like, um, let's see. With every production vendor we've worked with, we've paid on invoicing upon completion of the project. And I'm just not really sure how to like respond to that. How bad do you want the job? You there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, how bad do you want the job? I mean, it's a pretty good job. It was like four thousand dollars for a sixty-second video, and then it's a sixty-second video, and then like two thirty-second cuts of that video, and then two fifteen-second cuts of the video. So it's, so it's like five videos. All right, I mean... Five videos total, but it's, like, all from the same, like, shoots, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, I mean, this situation, this is your first time working with him? Yeah, it is. Yeah, so you'd be like, hey, listen, totally understand uh, that he worked in the past. Um, this is our first project together. What I could do is this. I would charge you 50% up front and then 50% on completion. And then moving forward, working together... You know, we could do, you know, paid per um, at the end. I personally wouldn't do that, um, you know, waiting to yeah. get paid because you're taking all the risk, right? So unless they're willing to pay you a lot of money to do it, the the risk factor in your end, you, you're putting up all the production costs and time into it. And then because I, I had that happen to me. You know, I ended up losing like over five G's in a situation like that oh, because, wow. you know, they ended up they ended up giving me bad checks after bad checks and I had to chase them down and all of that. So, you know, I'd be like, hey, I totally understand that's how you worked with other vendors in the past. I want to work with you, but what I can do, I could do I could do 50-50. Um, and then, you know, if he doesn't want to do it, like, so why are you hesitant about, and I'm just curious, why are you hesitant about paying up front for the production? Um, so part of the... Part of the issue, I think, is that they're the ones billing the client. Like I said, they're like an agency, mm -hmm. so they're hiring me. They're the ones billing the client. I assume they're probably tacking on a dollars or 2000 or whatever um, to the client for the production. Yeah. They're going to be paying me. So he was like, I understand your request, but we have to go through the invoicing process to collect money from the client and then pay you. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of where I'm like... I understand that, but at the same time, like, you guys still have the money. Yeah. Um, so they could, it's not like they need to be paid by the client, by the client in order to pay me, right? Um, yeah, I, I had that situation happen with um, another company. And here's the thing, too. When you are working, because you're pretty much your subcontractor to their contracting for whatever it needs. I've had the situation, you know, that the other big thing you need to, worry with this is also revisions and things like that because i went through the, the whole process of like you know having the contract like hey within three days we need to get revisions but it's one of those things you need to be aware that you're not going to get revisions in three days when they are because they're pretty much you're going to send them the video they're going to give you the revisions they think it's needed then you're going to make those changes then they're going to show it to the clients so your whole process of revisions for this is going to be a lot longer as well but then there's also the problem of, you know, what happens if the client doesn't pay them or let's say the client doesn't like the video for some weird reason and they're like, hey, I don't like this. And then what what are they gonna do not pay you now because the client said that they didn't like it but you ended up doing all the work, you know what I mean? Right, right. So, okay. I, yeah, so I mean, it's either one of those things like, hey, listen, I wanna work with you guys. The best I could do is a 50-50. Um, this is our first time working together. And, you know, as we build the relationship, um, you know, I think that, you know, I could readjust this. But our policy normally is to do a 50-25-25. I'm willing to make an exception to that policy to do a 50-50. How does that sound to you? 
And then they're really pushing it, then, you know, maybe do 40, 60 or something like that. But to take on all the risk, you know, because at least you want to cover your time, right? Worst case scenario, because I had that happen that, you know, the client paid us the first half of the deposit, but then they ended up pulling out the whole project. You know, we still shot all the stuff, but at least I got my basis covered with, you know, the time I spent to shoot and all that stuff and put it together. I didn't even have to finish the project, but I was like, all right, that's cool. At least I got paid for my time. But to do a project with someone for the first time and they're not paying you anything up front, um, you know, I, I'm, I get skeptical about that, especially if it's, you know, an agency. So like we're working with another big client, which they told me, they're like, hey, we are, we're not, we can't pay you till like 30 days out but I'm working directly with this huge enterprise. You know, I'm not like, they're not, I know they're not going anywhere. Uh, right. And we both have, I had to sign contracts in their end. They had to sign contracts on my end. So there, there are those different situations that, you know, that rule plays out. But when you are a subcontractor to a contractor, that's the one that I, I get skeptical about. Yeah. So you think bottom line, like make sure I get something up front, right? Yeah, I need to get something, you know what I mean? You need to at least get, like, let's say that the shoot doesn't work out. You need to at least cover your time that you went out there to shoot. Yeah. At least that's the way that I look at it, because I don't want to leave out empty-handed. Right. And that was one thing I was, like, worried about was, like, so five videos, and even though it's, like, all generated from the same, uh two shoots in the same like 60 second video just cut down so it's like it's less work than than like the first 60 second video but it's still five videos and revisions for each one of those videos like this could be it could be two months from now before they get revisions back to me for all of the videos and the projects like counted as completed yeah and that, you know what i'm saying and then it's like to wait two months to get paid for this is like mm-hmm I don't know, that, that would just be crazy. So. It, it happens, bro. I mean, that's what happened. That's how I ended up losing a partnership with an agency because of that. Because first of all, the guy, my account manager with his other agency ended up kind of like doing his own thing. He wasn't on top of, he it pretty much, the guy that was my connects to the agency, it wasn't his client that I was doing video for or somebody else in his agency. So there's this whole loop of like, you know, me doing it, like talking to him about it, then he passed it along to the other guy, and then before it got, and then the other guy and the, him, they had miscommunications. So then they're asking me for all this stuff. I was like, bro, that's not part of a contract. And they're like, what are you talking about? We don't have a contract. I'm like, yeah, we have a contract. I don't know who you're not talking to, but like the project ended up going like two months went by, and then the client's like, hey, I need these revisions. Like, hey, I gotta charge you extra because, like, because the other thing I have on, the contract is like, hey, after seven days, if you don't get revisions, we close out the project. There's going to be a hundred dollar fee. And, you know, that's something you got to let them know ahead of time, because it's not fair that you hold on to a project for two or three months waiting for revisions. Right. Because like, uh, right. as Christo said, it's hot potato. The longer you're holding on to the project, the less money you're making on it. It's like, yeah, it's great. It's four thousand dollars or five thousand dollars. But it took you five months to get the project done. You know what I right. mean? That's eating up your time. Yeah, no, for sure. That's good advice, man. Well, thank you for taking the call and giving me that advice. Cause I, yeah, I, I didn't know what to do. I was like, I obviously want the job. Uh, and I don't think you'd screw me over. Like, they've been in business for a while, but it's still like... I, I don't know. I know, bro. That's you'd a be lot of work to put it up front. So. It, it is, but you'd be surprised, man. Like the lady that screwed me over. Like I was literally having Thanksgiving dinner at her house, and the next day she wrote me a bad check for five Gs. So it's like, oh my gosh. So it's one of those things. It's like, wait, what? I was like, no way. I honestly didn't even know. Like I remember the next morning, I'm getting all these notifications. Like withdraw, withdraw for you. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then the whole check that she gave me, like just completely bound. So it's like, I've been in a couple of different situations and that's when I was like, okay, I'm using contracts. Like, you know, you need the footage, that's great. But unless I'm getting paid, I'm not getting like, you know, cause I gave her the footage too. So that was the other thing, I lost the leverage. So like one thing that I would tell you is if you are delivering anything to them, have watermarks on those videos. And what I started doing now, I just have like draft. I'll have like, like a draft across the screen on like opacity set to like number two. So at least if they're gonna put it out, you can still see it, 
and you can still tell that it's draft and I present everything to them like that and until I get the final payment you're getting a draft video you know I'm not sending you the video because that's where I fucked up on I was sending her these files that she could literally just take and um you know put them up I had no leverage on my end so if you are working with them you know put the draft on the video so you know they're presenting the client and you know it, sh it shows drafts and you're when they get the finals is when you get paid right okay so like just put uh like just watermark every version i sent to them until it's like um the, until it's the final version and, and they paid me the final amount yeah, that's what I'll do. You know, and I make my draft, like I said, it's at like 2%. So it's like, you could see it, but you could barely see it. Because before, like, when I was working with other people, I was having, you know, they'll put these drafts on there. But it was so big and on the way that, like, it, it like you don't want the, the watermark to take away from the video, right? Uh, in the sense of, like, watching it. But it needs to be, you know, visible enough that, you know, they need, they want the video, uh, the, the final yeah. product. Uh, way of it. Okay. Um, how big are you making the the watermark? Huge. <laughs> so like two percent, and then is it? It's is it huge. Like covering the whole screen yeah, it's the whole much? screen. It's you know before I used to do like something on the corner or something like that, but like nowadays, you know, there's so many ways for someone to be able to get rid of your watermark. That my is literally I put it like on an angle from like top to bottom. So, um, you know, it's, it's across the whole screen. There's no way you're going to be able to crop out or, you know, try to bleed out the, the watermark on that video. Okay, cool. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate it. For sure, bro. Let me know how this shit goes. If you need a hand, holler at your boy. Yeah, definitely, man. It's, uh, it'll be interesting. It's just like this, uh, and it's basically just going to be like event coverage because they're doing, uh, Day. and then on the 29th, um, they're just doing um, so it should be pretty simple. I'm just trying to figure out, like, obviously they're not, like, paid talent, like, mm -hmm. actual people at the event, so I'm just trying to figure out how to handle that and, like, lighting at these venues and stuff like that, so. Yeah, I mean, um, lighting, so, like, in those situations where I usually tell them is to have they need to, here, here's the thing, they need to have a couple people at this event that they're like, hey, we want to use you for this event. Because, right. like, the worst thing, yeah. like, I went to a shoot last week that, like, we got to the office, and they didn't tell anyone that they're going to be on camera. So this makes people right. really awkward, right? They're like, oh, fuck, like, you know, I wish I'd put on more makeup. I wish I wore something different. So these tell them, be like, hey, listen, um, you know, super excited about the shoot is there a couple people that we can select to be the main talents for this when we are shooting them you know because like it is a, it's an event and you're trying to shoot around them they might you know you're not you're not sure how some people you know some people might even want to be recorded because maybe they're not like those are all those things you got to kind of consider so at least talk to them like hey is there two or three people that we can use as kind of like the main talent for the story and then maybe that's another way that you you know approach the video is find two people that kind of have a connection already that you know of and you're kind of capturing them and then you know you yeah. can even do a testimonial video on the back side of this whole thing if it works out for them you're like hey they met at this event and here's their story like i know bumble does like a lot of like little videos like this about how people met on bumble yeah. I'll literally try to approach it and pitch them on a whole new video concept after that. Oh, that's a great idea, man. Um, what do you think about lighting with this? Because, like, like, this Sunday, for example, it's out, like, a trampoline park. And I'm worried. I, th I think I'm going to go try to scout the location beforehand. But I'm worried about, um, like, the, the in-house lighting, like, flickering or something like that. And then it's like, oh, shit, what do I do now um, if, like, the lighting in-house is really bad? So and it's kind of hard to like set up my own lights in, in such a big like space like that. Yeah, so I mean, I think he, you hit it right on uh, on the nail of like I'll try to I'll go scout it out and I'll bring my camera with me and I'll kind of get a baseline. Okay, what's my ISO at right now? What, what's it looking like? So you can go back home. You can take a look at that. Like when we shot this last commercial for Blue. I brought my camera with me. I wanted to get an idea of like, what was the lighting going to be like? And then in your situation, if you go there and you find a certain areas that you like better to film at, 
you know, I don't know what kind of lights you got, but I'll probably like for me on like when we had to light up a um a grocery store for one of the commercials, I just brought the 120. I took the the dome off it and I just blasted the 120 into the sky and into the ceiling and that just bounced on a lot of good lighting all over where we're shooting. Um, so it really all depends, you know, but then you got to consider, okay, is there outlets and things like that? And so I think right. you going there and doing some pre-scouting before is going to make your job a lot easier. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I think I'm going to try to get down there like tomorrow or Friday. Um, yeah, because like banding was like the one, or like the life flickering or something I was worried about. Because I was shooting a wedding last weekend and the whole reception was just like super bad flickering and I couldn't get I couldn't get my shutter speed uh, to a point where like it wasn't flickering yeah um, so that was one thing I was like kind of scared of just not being able to control the lighting in there Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a good, it's a, it's a definitely a legit concern too. But then also, like, you're a trampoline park, right? So, like, having an understanding, where can you put lights at that someone's not gonna fucking jump and like hit, hit a light or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, cool, man. Um, the stuff you guys have been doing looks awesome, dude. I haven't seen the the new one, but the first one you put out was great. Yeah, I'm waiting. I'm really happy with the second one. Um, literally waiting on same thing. I'm waiting on approval, and that was a project that it was supposed to be a quick project that was actually due. They wanted to air it two days ago, and it's been like seven days since I've been waiting for revision. Right, so like oh, you know, it's a quick, and I I'm cool with it because like the client's awesome, and you know they're very easy to work with. But it's one of those things of like. You know, it's supposed to be a quick project that's supposed to be completed and done two days ago. I'm still waiting on revisions to do color grading to finish the project. So it's one of those things of like, you know, sometimes the clients tell us things and um, sometimes it doesn't work out that way. So definitely, you know, in your scenario, definitely be cautious of, you know, that communication portal between, you know, the agency you're working with and then they got to communicate with their client. So it, it, it yeah. is going to be a longer process and something that you need to you know have consideration for uh just when yeah. you're working on getting these revisions because it's not going to happen because i thought that you know i thought that just because i had on my contract that you know i had to get revisions back in within three days and things like that that they're gonna buy by it but honestly it doesn't always work that way and i think the best way um that i learned from chris um, is like you got to have that conversation with them of like, hey, I'm factoring these things. I've worked in this situation before. What happens is that revisions are going to take longer. Um, you know, I was going to bring that up to you guys. Just, you know, either, you know, what he told me is like, hey, I was going to tell you this now. I'm going to give you these amount of revisions and these amount of days. If it goes over that amount of time, I'm going to have to charge you more. So either we could bake in that charges now, or we could do it later. I just don't want to come back to you later on and having to nick one dime you for every single situation. Are you okay with that? Hmm, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, because it's hard for you to have that conversation with them after, right? But when you bring it up up front and you're like, hey, listen, I've done this before. These are the issues. I want to bring it up to you now. If you're cool with it, I'm cool with it. I just don't want to later on come back to you asking for more money and you're like yo you never told me about this i'm letting you know right now that this is what normally happens if you're cool with it great i'm cool with it just you know i want you to be aware of it yeah yeah for sure that's a good point well cool man again i appreciate the help you've been super helpful for me um and always appreciate it man for sure bro anytime there you go guys if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you're new here, hit subscribe. Uh, see you guys next time. Peace.